moment but as you can see off the start we're about to get a big incident watch to the right hand side of the circuit we're going to see into the first corner big moment for Josh Bannister and he will not take up the restart fortunately though he is unhurt but we can watch it again on replay Alan yeah he comes down you see him right in the middle of the track there they're watching he grabs his front brake watch his rear wheel it lifts off the ground there and then grabs as it comes back down and he's all over the place yeah he and made no contact with anybody no unfortunately for Josh Another rider going down as well, can't quite make out the number on that bike, but uh, Josh Bannister would not take the restart. Once more, the rider line-up for this class on your screens now. All the riders' pictures, numbers and names on your screen. We just run through them. And we'll talk through the grid as well. O'Gorman and Belford on the front row from Walker and Maguire on the second. Emmanuel Brinton and Taylor Lawrence will take up residence on the third row with Bailey Stewart-Campbell and James Cook. Johnny Garnas and Troy Jeffrey. Then it's Declan Connell and Sandy Horn from Ryan Hitchcock, Mason Foster, Jack Kirsch, Taylor Stewart-Campbell and Elliot Dufton will round out the grid. A real shame that we won't see Josh Bannister, a very tipped, a highly tipped rider for the future. But then, of course, there are so many of them on this grid. Is this going to be another Casey O'Gorman demonstration out front? Or can this time Evan Belford get one over on him in the LC40 class? Ollie Walker, Ross Maguire, Emmanuel Brinton, all wanting to put one over on them, of course, as away we go. And it's a cracking start from the second row for Ollie Walker. He pushes through to second place. What a lightning bolt he is off the start. Fantastic start. By oh, there's two, oh, got two got bikes caught out. Yeah, Ryan Hitchcock's one of them, 43. And it looks like Casey is away. He's clear at the moment, uh, but it is Ollie Walker in second. Belford's had to drop the third. I thought it might be Belford who would provide Casey O'Gorman with the biggest challenge, but that may be now down to Walker. Has he got the pace? I think Droy Jeffrey was the one who really got badly held up there at the start. He's lost at least three bike positions. Back up the inside. That's the move from Evan Belford to try and come back past Walker, and he's done it. Brilliant move on the first lap. So difficult to do on cold tyres, but he's made that work beautifully. And so now it's O'Gorman from Belford in second position. Walker, Maguire, Brinton, Lawrence, and Stuart Campbell. Great battle on the first lap. Ross Maguire getting uh, racy, looking down the inside of Walker, but can't get it done. So it's Belford, Walker. Maguire, second, third and fourth, but Casey once more is uh, off with the fairies, he's away and gone, can they get close to him? Casey O'Gorman is riding like riders seven or eight years older than him at the moment, he's just absolutely launched away, but Belford hanging on to this second position from Walker, Maguire, Brinton, and I think that's still Lawrence in there with them, just trying to count how many bikes, yes, Lawrence is still there in sixth position, Bailey Stewart Campbell on the 99 bike, not far away from this either, there he is just coming into the shot, so we've got Belford in second place, now he will be desperate to hang on to that after the absolute agony of running in second place at a canter in the previous race in the mini gp50 and retiring from the race with mechanical difficulties this time he will want to hang on to the top spots as here comes walker once again to try and make the move on the inside can't get it done and as a result of that ross mcguire is tightening up the privateer casey o'gorman leads it just flashed through the picture and then it's anvil tag yamaha in second moto rapido ducati in third and bennett suzuki uh, in fourth place, that is Belford, Walker and Maguire, second, third and fourth, the team riders. It's the privateer that leads it, though. Yeah, and keep an eye on the 93, the man who's got uh, Mark Marquez's number, Emmanuel Brinton. He's working very hard there in fifth position to keep up with them. He does not want to lose sight of a chance of the podium, especially when he knows that Belford and Walker will be tightening up their battle. You can bet this is going to get interesting as Belford puts one eye over his shoulder. He knows that Walker is only a few inches behind him as they come up and over the line again. Walker's going to dive for the inside, is he? He tries and has a look at it, but Belford is so confident in the first corner breaking zone he's not able to give him the space and he's certainly not looking to give him anything on a plate today turn three the riders come through turn three and head for the three consecutive hairpins this is hairpin one that will lead down to uh, not surprisingly hairpin two and then up to hairpin three great opportunities to overtake but tight and twisty and uh, it does depend how you set your bike up i guess do you set it up for the tight and twisty bits here or do you set it up for the 
main straight and then the run out of turn one down two through turn two which is flat out into turn three on the brakes walker's got a really good exit position on the bike as he comes off the hairpins if he can get good purchase on the throttle on the way out of these corners he's going to have a good chance as again he looks up the inside of belford but he just isn't confident enough to slam it up the inside on the brakes but watch him as he comes off the turn this is where walker's particularly strong look he's got pl plenty of confidence on the way through these long fast sweepers but watch him in the hairpin he gains ground in the braking zone on Belford watch now he comes off the turn look he's got plenty of grip as he comes through he's really confident in these slower corners he gets closer again watch an eye for Ross McGuire he might be able to get good but watch look out of the corner he goes wider he's got plenty of grip on the outside line and that's what's going to put Belford under pressure in the second half of the race he's setting himself up and practicing for when he's got enough to make that move Look at that hump in the track, you're right. He has the brakes pretty much leave the ground and here comes Walker down the inside. Still can't get it done, has a look. But Belford is holding on from Walker and Maguire is looking at these pair in front and thinking, I need you two to have a coming together. Well, look at O'Gorman. He's a full corner and half a straight ahead of them now. But these guys are still battling away for second. Belford still hanging on by a thread as Ollie Walker continues to give him that pressure. Down to the right-hander. Sweep through. Good acceleration off the turn. Walker's wider out. It means he can be faster, but Belford's more confident on the exit. Now watch Walker on the exit here. He gets a much better line on the motor rapido Ducati. Let's see if he gets his chance on the inside. No, he can't get there. So he has to come back on the throttle. Puts him under pressure again as O'Gorman goes over the hump. Look at him this time. Now Walker's got much more speed as he comes up. And he's in front. He's in front before they even cross the line. Brilliant from Walker. He gets through. No problems at all. Now Belford's going to have to try and retaliate. Walker's through in a second, and that was a mighty move through the final turn. Now we'll see the pace he's got. Can he clear off? He's been held up by Evan Belford, clearly. But uh, has he got the pace to put a hammer down and get away from Belford in third place and uh, secure that second place for himself? But, uh, Ross Maguire doesn't look uh, too slow either, does he, Jake? No, indeed. Maguire looks as though he's seen what Walker has done, and he's going to try and make the move himself because he's now sizing up right that's how to get it done you've got to give him pressure in that final hairpin and make the move happen so, oh no he's lost it walker's down walker's down and just gets clipped by belford but walker's down walker is out of the race from second and that started because he was looking behind him going into the hairpin and that just unsettled his rhythm on the exit of the corner he just clipped the curb coming out that is his race over and now that puts ross mcguire through into second position past belford yeah, and that is because Belford had to take to the grass to miss the head of Ollie Walker. Very, very close indeed. Devastating for Ollie Walker. All that hard work no, he got through. He's ridden so well. He's ridden so well. And unfortunately, he's down and out, but he'll come again. Here is the race leader. It is Casey O'Gorman. Once more, we saw him clean up in the Mini GP50 class. He comes to the line and he'll get the uh, last lap flag, the black and yellow flag for the last lap. It is another, yet another comfortable victory for Casey well, O'Gorman. Don't what say a yet. He has. Don't say it yet. He hasn't come home yet. He's still got a lap to do here. But yes, in his current form, Casey O'Gorman absolutely on the march. I mean, in weekends like this, he could win pretty much every single race, lead every single lap, set every single fastest lap. And if there was a raffle, with his luck, he'd probably win that as well. Absolutely incredible how hard he has been pushing this weekend. But then this is a name that you're going to have to start getting used to in the world of motorbike supremacy. He could be our next great charge from Great Britain. Indeed, he could be the next Danny Kent to come out of the Cool Fab series and go on to win at least British titles, but world titles as well. It's Casey O'Gorman that takes the win on the seven machine. Casey O'Gorman, a name you are going to hear a lot of in future, folks. What a ride from Ross McGuire in second in front of Evan Belford. Big shame, though, for Ollie Walker. You have to feel for him. Had second pretty much on a plate there as a result of that fight. Emmanuel Brinton brings the bike home in fourth position ahead of Taylor Lawrence. Bailey Stewart Campbell rounds out the top six. His brother Taylor still battling on the last lap. That's Troy Jeffrey in front of him. Mason Foster behind him. I think it's going to finish like that. But a great battle all the way to the line. 
So, uh, yes, just to talk you about outside the top five, Bailey Stewart Campbell sixth in front of James Cook, eighth position, a good ride from Declan Connell. Ryan Hitchcock came home ninth, great five back for him, and tenth place, Johnny Garners. But the day once again belongs to Casey O'Gorman. And in the championship fight, it's O'Gorman on top once again, 290 points with Maguire, Aidan Davey, Bailey Stewart Campbell, and Declan Connell desperately trying to hang on to him.